It is quite possible we have entered my favorite part of the entire footballing calendar. Now, I love a good World Cup. I love a good Euros and Copa America. I've even been known to indulge myself, you know, in the late night, early morning hours, like a late night snack with the CONCACAF Nations League. But the end of the season is fantastic. Not because of the title races, most of those are already decided. Not because of the Champions League final. We've got that every year, right? But the relegation playoffs, the promotion playoffs. And you see, everybody always blames me, and I say me, and I'm just using me as a stand-in for America here, for creating this whole playoff system. But you cannot deny, the, be honest with me right here, right? Playoffs are sick. Playoffs and the drama they create are absolutely fantastic. And while I do appreciate the hypocrisy of, you know, the Americanization of things, but people also fully embracing promotion and relegation playoffs, I also just appreciate the fact that they exist. And while I want to make more fun of everybody for using playoffs, and everybody usually just makes fun of the idea of playoffs as an American thing, I can't because I freaking love them. God, the promotion playoff final in Wembley every year, absolutely amazing all the way down the different levels. But there was one truly exceptional playoff that occurred in Germany. Now, first of all, the German Bundesliga was brilliant this year. Not only did we have all the drama at the top with Bayer Leverkusen going unbeaten, first ever team to go unbeaten, Stuttgart finishing ahead of Bayern Munich, who ended up finishing in third with an unbelievable amount of resurgence. We had Heidenheim, who 15 years ago was in the fifth division of Germany, making it into Europe. But then if you look nine points below Heidenheim, nine points, nine, nine points. If you look nine points down, you get to the relegation zone already. That's how tight the league was. Heidenheim, you see up here on 42 points, making it into Europe in eighth. Bochum ending up in a relegation playoff down in 16th with 33 points. Nine points away. That's the gap between Europe and the gap between relegation. I mean, that is fantastic. Well, I say relegation. The relegation playoff. Köln and Darmstadt got relegated. Darmstadt... That was the club that was getting berated by a fan earlier this year. He, you know, the, I think it was like the head of the ultras came on the field and gave the entire team a tongue lashing. They really didn't look like they belonged in the league all year. They won three of 34 matches. They're going down. Colton going down with them. And Bulkham, they looked like they were going down too because they ended up in a relegation playoff against Fortuna Dusseldorf. And the first match of the relegation playoff is at the Bundesliga team, which meant Bochum hosted the first leg and it did not go well. It started terribly and an early own goal off a guy named Hoffman, who I promise is going to come back in this story later. And then two goals in the second half at Bochum to give Fortuna Dusseldorf a three goal lead coming home. Three goal lead. And then after that, they did something I do on Football Manager all the time. They made five substitutions in a seven minute span, just swapping out half of their outfield players in order to get fresh legs on the field. I'm assuming at that point, they were just okay with wasting the rest of the time that was to be played in the match. I don't know, but Fortuna Dusseldorf, it looked for sure. People were coming into stream, typing in the chat like, dude, Dusseldorf, uh, it looks like they're going to go up. Because most of the time, the Bundesliga team wins this thing. The vast majority of the time, the Bundes... It's, it's like a well-known fact that the relegation playoff out of the Bundesliga is almost always won by the, you know, the team that finishes in 16th in the Bundesliga. So to have that team lose 3-0 to Fortuna Dusseldorf was a big shock. And Dusseldorf outplayed them. They had higher XG, right? They deserved to win the game. 3-0 was probably a little harsh, but they absolutely deserved to win the game. And they're going into the second leg at home in front of an absolutely raucous crowd with a 3-0 lead. If you were wondering how Fortuna Dusseldorf got in this position, they finished behind St. Pauli and Holstein Kiel, who will be going up to the Bundesliga this season, but pretty convincingly. I mean, they lost the second fewest amount of matches in the league this year, just seven losses in 34 matches, and they finished well ahead of Kaiserslautern, for example, who made it all the way to the German Cup final. So it's not like the second division is terrible, and Fortuna Dusseldorf's performance kind of showed that again. And I I was, I, when somebody told me they won 3-0 at Pokemon, I just assumed it was already over and so did everybody else. But that's when things got spicy because I'm not making a Zealandism just telling you that Fortuna Dusseldorf got promoted and that was some big surprise. No, things got spicy, but like the kind of spice that I can't handle, which is basically almost every kind of spice. So we need to like go into the Thai restaurant and asking for what they give 
the locals. Because in the first eight minutes of the second leg, Bochum got two yellow cards. And then in the 18th minute, that dude Hoffman, who scored an own goal in the first half of the first leg, he scored a goal in a set piece in the 18th minute right in front of an amazing, like, home stand that Fortuna Dusseldorf had. And then all of a sudden, right, I, I didn't watch the match, right? I watched the extended highlights afterwards because I was streaming while the match was going on. Uh, playing in this giant Rust Kingdoms server right now. I don't know. I got involved, invited to play in this giant uh, Rust server with a bunch of other YouTubers and streamers. It's going well. We killed Quackity twice. I built a restaurant. We sell bear meat. It's awesome. Back to the point, though. Hoffman scored this goal, and you can feel, even watching the extended highlights, the nerves. You just feel it, right? There's something, like, if this had been a league match in the middle of the season or even a cup match in the middle of the season, there's a different feel. Right, but when you have a lead, like a 3-0 lead, and you spend the entire time between those matches sitting there, marinating in the fact that you're about to go to the Bundesliga, you, it, it, people, people don't put themselves in the player's position enough to kind of understand what's going on here, right? But, but they're getting texts from all of the people they've known. Oh, dude, congratulations. You're going to have the opportunity to play in the Bundesliga. It's going to be freaking amazing. Like, I saw the game. This is great. You go home to your friends and family. That's all they're talking about. Oh, you, you know, you're up 3-0. Like, oh, we still have the second leg to play. Yeah, you get the second leg to play. But you guys are up 3-0. You know, all that is their entire life leading up to this. So as much as you want to try and come back and play since the moment that the idea that that isn't going to happen is introduced, like an early set-piece goal, that starts to weigh on you, and you can feel it. It was like everybody in the stadium was feeling the exact same thing. It was nervous. Not that it's ever not going to be nervous. It has to be nervous. It's a freaking promotion playoff to get into the Bundesliga. This is like the biggest money matches that anybody plays on the face of the earth, trying to get in one of these major leagues in a promotion playoff. But the nerves were there, and Bochum continued to play hard. They picked up a third yellow card in the first half. They made a couple of changes, and they got to the 66th minute, and they scored again. And this goal was a little more frustrating, right? They gave somebody a lot of time in the corner of the box to whip in a low, hard cross towards the back post. The goalkeeper might have been able to come out and get to the ball, but it was a very well-struck cross. And my boy Hoffman got to it again, which means he's got two goals for Bochum and one goal for Dusseldorf in this tie. So huge credit to Hoffman. Also has a yellow card. I believe we can call that you know, a hat trick of sorts. Two goals and a yellow. And at this point in the 66th minute, it is 3-2. Right, and that, that, that low roar, that kind of dull roar of tension that Fortuna Dusseldorf's been living in gets kicked all the way up, and then lightning strikes. Horrible misfortune. I can't show it to you because the copyright stuff, but a, a ball comes out to the left wing, a cross right at the edge of the box, and it hits an arm. Just the most brutal, you hate to see it, games gone sort of goal to see turn such a pivotal match. It was one of the, obviously after the second goal, Bochum's fans are going crazy. They're picking the ball up out of the net. They're flying around. Dusseldorf's nervous, right? They're, they're better safe than sorry. They're not going to possess the ball as well in that situation. And then you batten down the hatches. And what happens when you batten down the hatches? What happens when you park the, the oil tanker in front of the goal? There's going to be a lot of balls getting whipped in and bouncing around. And basically immediately, it just happens to catch the dude on the arm. Referee doesn't even need VAR, gives the pen on the spot. Bochum ties it up 3-3. And we go all the way to penalties, even though, and I, I got I just have to mention this, because it was unbelievable. Fortuna Dusseldorf should have scored in the 117th minute. At this point, order has been restored. There's almost like this pressure that's off once the match has been tied again. Like, they, they, you know, there have been enough times since the match had been tied. The fans were back into it. The players, you know, Fortuna Dusseldorf was kind of back to its old tricks and trying to score. And there were just consecutive goal line clearances by Bochum in the 117th minute. I mean, first one, it's kind of like a dribbling header that the dude kicks out. And the second one, there's a rebound that's just trickling. It's all part of the same play to this guy. And, and from the camera angle, you just see an open goal. And he fires it, and a defender just goes flying in front of the in front of that little hole of the goal and just blocks it away again. And you just see the whole fan section absolutely losing their minds. And of course it goes to penalties. And of course, Bochum loses. They go all the way to the seventh penalty and a guy named Uchino, uh, or sorry, Uchino just, he just skies it. I felt terrible for him. You know, he immediately collapses. 
Right, I mean, just this is the this is the icing on the cake. And when they were talking to Cristal Solis after the game, he really he really talked about the mindset of teams that end up in this situation. He said something very interesting that I kind of queued up here. If the name sounds familiar, he's on loan from Norwich at Fortuna Dusseldorf, by the way. That's why he, he speaks English too. And we were nervous, we were afraid of them for no reason. We play at home, sold out stadium, amazing atmosphere, and we were playing without anything without plan, without courage, without uh, without the winning mentality. So <laughs> they use the strength, they score two goals out of set pieces, they score penalty as well, and in the end, the extra time I think was both teams that were waiting for the final whistle to go to the penalties. I think it's, it's such a telling thing to hear an athlete say, we were nervous. We were afraid of them for no reason. I respect the hell out of Christos Solis for his candor. And I really appreciate somebody giving an actual answer to an actual question in the tunnel after such a tough match. He went on to say later, as his tweet points out, it was one of the worst days of my life so far. I mean, can you imagine when you have that rug pulled on you and you think you are going to get promoted to the Bundesliga, even if you're a lone E? You know, it's it's just abs it's brutal to have that happen in front of your home fans and than to think you you had it in the bag and play an entire season that started in July, right? And, and get all the way to this point and not be able to take the team all the way up. Just catastrophically brutal. But a sign that the reason so many weird things happen in these playoff situations is the pressure is real and the mental state of your team might just be the most important thing. He said, we didn't have the winning mentality and they ended up losing by the exact right amount to keep Bochum alive. Just insane. Bochum keeps the record of Bundesliga teams having great success in this playoff alive, but they did it from the massive underdog position. So uh, condolences to Dusseldorf fans. Congratulations to Bochum fans. You get to play Holstein Kiel in the Bundesliga next year. I know that's who you're looking forward to.